Hey, hey, it's me, King Cobbler. My specialty is corn verting factory built to cobbler botched. Just look at this Ranger. I added this fine push to talk system. Yep, it's a little loose. Shorts out, but it keeps you on your toes. I also did some chassis carving updates. Added all kinds of mystery options. There's no need to document. After it leaves my shack, it's not my concern. Since it's TLU, I'm dealing with another cobble job, this time on a Johnson Ranger 2. Unfortunately, this started its life as a factory built unit. And now it's a cobbler botched unit. Somebody's been in here screwing around with the push to talk system. They added a lot of jacks to the back. There is snakes of cables underneath the Ranger. There's also been some fine power supply work done. So what I have to do is reverse all that and try to get this thing back to its stock condition. Then I'm going to add the D-Lab push to talk. So here's a close up of the master cobbling job of the keyer platform. There's a little control power transformer, two ice cube relays. Underneath, a whole bunch of nice wiring. All these supports were loose, allowing the platform to contact the function switch, which was shorting out, so it's a good thing that I initially brought this thing up on a Variac. So at this point, it is not safe to operate until I reverse all these mods and get this thing back into stock condition. First step, I'm going to carve out all that wiring that doesn't belong there, remove this added on panel with the relays, this gray cable takes off under the chassis, and comes back here to that cinch connector. So we're going to get all that out of the way and try to return the circuit to normal. Well there's the pile top side. Next task is to get this cabling out from under the chassis. Unfortunately he did me a great favor and put about 10,000 zip ties behind the filter caps. So I'm going to have to take out the filter cap assembly to gain access. And then take a look at the value of those caps. Do you see something wrong there? Well since I'm going to remove this filter cap assembly, I went ahead and popped off one of the caps. They're actually epoxied to the board. So I'm going to have to pry those up and then I'll be able to access the wiring behind. So I believe that's all of it. I removed those filter caps, gained access to get that harness out. I will be replacing those filter capacitors, but first I need to go topside, repair the keyer platform wiring and get that working. Everything's cleaned up. Now I have these pigtails hanging out that went to the other push to talk system, but they go to the right terminals on the function switch. So I'm going to replace these wires with longer ones and we're going to install the D-Lab push to talk system. I've got the push to talk system installed. All the wiring is cleaned up. The Ranger is actually putting out full power. But, of course, there's another problem. While monitoring modulation, if I flip the switch to phone, I'm drawing excessive modulation current. And I find if I go to phone and turn up the audio, it's going down, indicating that we have some type of an oscillation or DC getting into the preamp circuitry. All right, hooked up the scope to the output of the 12AX7. And look at there. Now watch when I turn up the audio gain. And watch when I turn it to phone. So there is the oscillation. It appears to be low frequency, so I'm wondering if for some reason the filaments are getting into my signal. And somebody has changed the preamp tube socket and recapped that area. And I'm wondering if they were chasing this oscillation to begin with. So I'm going to look real close and make sure that everything got connected properly. So I think I may have just found the source of our oscillation it's actually power supply ripple so there's this capacitor made by Jackson which I've never heard of I'm monitoring off it right now with the scope and look at that that's a lot of ripple it goes right off the screen I bet you that cap is causing all the problems we're checking that same point on the power supply after the filter caps been replaced you can see 
very little ripple. All right, going back and checking that modulation meter, I can advance the mic gain. There's no deflection. Now I'm going to key up the radio. There's my idle current, putting out full power. Let's bring up some audio gain. Hello, one, two, testing the Johnson Ranger 2. Looking good. Next step, we're going to listen to it on a receiver and see how clear that audio is. All right, this is a test of the Johnson Ranger 2. We're going to listen to the audio on a Kenwood R2000 receiver. And I have a Palstar dummy load. So let me move in on the metering and we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, we're going to test the Ranger. There's my plate. Here's my modulation current. Hello, hello one two. And 6 TLU testing the Johnson Ranger 2. Hello, 1212. Sounds pretty good, nice and quiet. I think she's good to go. Initially, when the Ranger came in, the main complaint was there was loss of grid drive, especially up on 2015 and 10. So now we're going to take a look at the grid on all bands. So I'm at 160. There's my grid. Lots of grid. Go to 80. Once again, nice grid current. There's 40. And then we go to 20. This is where he said it was really suffering. There is adequate grid drive, and I'm not at full drive. 15. Here's 10. And for the heck of it, we'll check 6. Oh, yeah. All kinds of grid drive on 6. So the combination of the mods that were installed in this Ranger, plus the fact that it had bad filter capacitors, were all attributing to the low grid current. But everything looks great now. Well, that's a wrap on the Ranger 2 project. It was sad to see what became of this factory built unit. The repair actions actually exceeded the value. Reflecting on this repair, it was quite obvious that the cobble mod jobs and the use of poor quality components caused all the malfunctions that this radio had. So on one hand I hate to see this but on the other hand it's usually an easy repair. Just pull out the modifications and return the radio to its stock condition. It generates income for my shop plus provides interesting material for videos. So cobblers keep it up.